Alright, I never thought I'd do this so soon, but David has spoken, and he demands I do Air Buddies! Of course you already knew that, but yes, it's time, sorta. Was still waiting to see what Oda was going to do with Wanda first before doing more dog films, but Patreon board dictates otherwise. So let's talk about the Air Bud franchise for a moment. Originally produced by Keystone Entertainment, but otherwise distributed by Disney, the Air Bud movie centered around a golden retriever named Buddy, who has the incredible knack for all sorts of sports. It started with basketball, in which it was just a mellow but nothing too bad Disney movie, about a boy coping with life with his new dog, and then it got sillier the more sports the dog got into. It went on for five movies, and only after 2003 did his lifeline of films end, only to follow up by Key Picks Productions, who starting in 2006, made movies based on the offspring of Buddy who were introduced in the third Air Bud movie. These films are about as notorious as the Land Before Time sequels, where they seem to crank them out almost every year, though thankfully they seemed to have stopped in 2013. But even then, there are nine movies made by this company, and I am not looking forward to them at all. But adding the first five Air Bud movies, doing every one of these will be a chore in of itself so I'll likely start attempting them next year when I'm not as busy with this year. Otherwise, let me show you the kind of thought process that goes into these buddy movies. This is Air Buddies. We open with narration by Don Knotts, playing a deputy dog named Sniffer. Welcome to Fernfield, where we like to say everything is possible. I've been the deputy of this here town since way back when. Of course, after this gig, I'm the one who's gonna need counseling. <laughs> Actually, this was his last film he ever did, so no, no you can't. It's still sad nonetheless. So he recaps how Buddy made this town famous through his love for sports, how he and his mate Molly had puppies, and well, that's the focus now. You gotta love their names though. Let's see, you got the big fella, Butterball. They just can't seem to fill this pup up. Ha ha, fat joke. I get it. B-Dog is a b-ballin' home dog. Who the kids say is all about the bling bling. But mostly because Pup Daddy was already taken. No, I'm not doing that one yet. Buddha is one of them zen puppies. You know, always meditating and doing that uh, yoga stuff. Mud Bud? Well, his name says it all. Okay, these two I got nothing for. Last but not least, Rosebud. Yes, Rosebud froze. <laughs> oh. We also get introduced to Sheriff Bob, played by the late Patrick Transhaw. And like Don here, this was his last film ever done. And wow, that's just depressing. It's like they stuck something in its mouth, sped up the footage, and there you go. Easy lip syncing. It'd be more believable just having the CGI mouths. Anyway, according to the Disney fan wiki, Noah is the half-brother of Josh, who was the main character in earlier movies. Having been introduced in the fourth movie before gaining ownership of Buddy in the fifth. But this causes so many consistency issues. Now again, I'm going off the Disney wiki as I've yet to see all of the movies. But first of all, the puppies were born during the third movie, while it can be assumed that in between three and four, Josh was born as a stepbrother. In the fifth movie, he would be five, and now he's 12. Now, most Golden Retrievers can only live up to 12 years at most, and I imagine Buddy was already about over a few years old in the first movie, and considering that Josh had to have aged enough to get into college by the time Noah was born, Buddy must be one ancient dog if he's still young enough to conceive children. Oh, but don't get me started on the puppies. If the same thing is applied to them, then even after about 13, give or take, years of growing in the same house as them, and yet they still have the bodies of like maybe six month olds? Unless they're going by human years or something, this is the most bizarre case of inconsistent aging I've ever seen. These things will outlive their owners at this rate. Anyway, since it's basketball season, I guess, 
that means Buddy is playing that over whatever other sport he might have done before. But they get a visit from... <laughs> Mrs. Niggles? I worked all day on this little piece of perfection. Blueberry pie, just for my favorite little boy. <laughs> okay, who plays you? Jane Carr? Wait, then that means you're... See? He's terrible! Send him home! Ah! Roll the rest of the clip! Oh no! Did somebody just say blueberry pie? Marble. And oh jeez, every animal is going to get to talk after all. And how appropriate that they adopt a personality based off their names and looks. Words of wisdom, mud bud. This game's gonna be off the chain insane. It's also worth mentioning that each of the puppies takes after a sport that their father has done for each of his films. That's kinda cute, I'll admit it. Anyway, they want to go to their father's game but are stuck with Mrs. Niggles. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. They get their chance to play with her yarn balls after she sleeps. Superstar Rosebud has stolen the ball! Oh! Oh! Beetle shoots! Oh, nothing but net! If Mudbud gets this point, the Beach Volleyball World Championship is his. <laughs> Guys, I know they play sports, but this is just too impractical, even for you. And of course, Butterball wants the pie. You're this close from me using Weird Al on you. Oh! What, that wakes her and not the chaos from earlier? But uh-oh, the parents are home. Time to make off so we can have more pratfalls. You know, we've, we always knew this day would come. Doesn't make it any easier, huh? Are we really getting rid of them, Dad? We're not getting rid of them. Did we get rid of Josh and Andrea? No. They went to college. Exactly. They went away so that they could learn. That's movie talk for we couldn't afford to bring them back. Gets them every time. Oh, and the puppies are getting the same kind of conversation about leaving to have new owners. This time is always hard for puppies. It was hard for me when I was your age. And I ended up with some alcoholic clown who abused me for years before I started taking up basketball. Oh, my life was a mess. Anyway, enough of that. Time to meet our villain of the movie. Oh, God damn it! it's Baron Von Elt again. No, his name is Selkirt Tanders. And he's trying to impress the son of Mr. Livington by giving him a tiger. But Bartleby wants an animal he can play with because even a child is smart enough to know that you can't play with a full-grown tiger, you dumb one-eyed man. Shall I <laughs> Better than this guy's acting. He seems like he's trying a bit too hard to emote, but it doesn't quite match his tone. So he sends his nephew Grimm with this guy named Denning to get Buddy. At any rate, since Noah really wants to make sure these puppies go to good people, he actually has everyone send papers for interviews. It goes something like this. Kid likes this sport, send the matching puppy, they don't like the kid. They do it again, and again, and again, and oh hey, a Game Boy Advance! And main parents draft him anyway, so puppy panic time! They finished drafting us in different families! I bet there was a bidding war for me. Did they consider astrological compatibilities? Okay, we'll totally behave and then we'll look super cute, and then, um, well, well then, then they'll change their minds. It's too late, dudes. They're taking us to our new homes tomorrow. tomorrow. Tomorrow? Surely something unexpected can happen that will keep us together a bit longer. Farnfield, right on schedule. <laughs> that isn't stupid. And wait. It's nighttime when the parents say they'll call the families tomorrow. Then it's daytime when we see Dumb and Dumber reaching town. And now it's nighttime again. Crap, the continuity clip is on cooldown. Damn it. Dumb and Dumber arrive and find out that there are two Air Buds. Or, you know, one is its mate. Meanwhile, the puppies think about running away, but oh no, Butterball is too fat to climb a chair. <laughs> Oops. Damn it, not again. I swear, if you open that one up one more time... No. No, must not go there. 
they're just puppies. They're just puppies. Getting over that one. The dum-dums decide they'll grab the puppies to use as bait to get the parents. Which I'm sure will be difficult as the puppies are going through town. Mmm. Go nuts. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have let that one alone. Mm, donuts. They catch Butterball, which in turn lures the other puppies rather easily. Hell, B Dog could have easily ran to get help, but nope. Let's go in. Buddy and Molly find out that the puppies are gone and go searching. And the level of competence of these two is astounding. You know what? Screw it. I need to have this one. Now we just let the puppies do the work. That's it. Call you mommy and daddy. <laughs> Mom? It's Grim, hi. Not you! Boy, Buddy is sure calm for someone who was just trapped. It's like they trained these animals or something. They don't even struggle when they're taken. How convenient. So now the plot is, more or less, reverse 101 Dalmatians. Instead of the puppies, it's the parents that the main villain took. They go to Sniffer and... Wow, that's just lazy. They're reusing the same damn clip for every time he talks while in this position. And now he's green screened. Brilliant! More or less, he's useless since his nose doesn't work anymore. Well, try putting effort into it like trusty. Then you'll get it to work. Selkirk gets the parents and amazingly enough, he's smart enough to realize that by multiplying something rare, you make more money. Take note, McLeach. He then orders the two to find the puppies they let go so he'll have even more money. Or else. If you don't fond me those puppies, you will fond yourselves being the tiger's lunch. <laughs> We've got to get out of here. Buddy, there's no way out. Unless... We dig our way out. Good thing the floor is made of dirt. Now they can start digging to freedom. By this point, our human protagonists are looking for the missing animals, while the puppies pass through a drive-in theater that's playing 101 Dalmatians for some reason. And of course, after failing to search their home for the puppies... They're not here. And I looked everywhere. Sure you did. They just happen to be at the exact same drive-in movie. You can't possibly be this convenient and get a load of this. When they enter the projection booth, the scene is on Cruella during her second major appearance. And then while they are just starting to cross the streaming of the movie, it jumps straight to the third act of the movie. You know, it's a good thing that Disney only distributes these kind of movies, because I can't imagine most of them being this badly inconsistent if they were producing them. I don't remember this part. Giant puppies attack Cruella de Vil? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Go giant puppies! Those puppies aren't in the movie. Those are our puppies! How would you know that? For all you know, they could just be someone else's... Oh, forget it. They get into some food before escaping, but not before running into some bikers who prove that while they are not the 1% of bad bikers, they still don't like their rides getting wrecked. Were you trying to hurt these puppies? No way! Anyway, since Noah and Henry think that maybe their dogs were taken, given that even the parents are gone, they think to find Sheriff Bob. Mom overhears this and... she's up for it? Well, there goes the parents don't believe us bit, which is good, I guess? There's someone here who wants to speak. <laughs> now that's a phoned in performance. Eh? Eh? Ah! Well, let's see what Noah and his crew are up to. Alright, you varmints. Come out of there with your hands up. I'm sending the dog in after you. And you ain't gonna like that. <laughs> nice use of the hose. It almost came out the butt. As if this movie didn't use 101 Dalmatians enough. The puppies get chased into a barn. Quit your wiggling. I never thought I'd see this, but let it rip. Uh.
All right, that's it. Come here. Come here. I'm gonna whip you silly. Bad. Bad movie. You are a bad movie. What are you looking at? They run into Billy, voiced by Wallace Shawn, who agrees to help them by ramming into Denning and leaving. You tricked me. Something hit me. Something else? It's all. Oh. Oh. Ugh, these guys make Horace and Jasper seem professional in comparison. They're so stupid that even when they know they're just lightly covered in mud, they still go after egglets. If this doesn't wreak a failure to you, then you're as bad as Sniffer. This had better be mud. Nope, it's full of shit. Anyway, after trapping the dumbasses, the puppies run into the forest while Noah and Henry... Um, why outside in the nude? Couldn't you have done this inside? Hell, even Bob has the right idea to put clothes on. It couldn't be. My sniffer's probably just playing tricks on me again. Oh, of course. A powerful blast from a skunk is enough to clear his sinuses. Good tip for never. The puppies later go into the deep, dark forest where they run into Michael Clark Duncan playing a wolf. Yep. I am Puppy! Hear me roar! Wait, that's terrible. I quit. Oh wait, the wolf is friendly though, so it's cool. They even take this opportunity to talk about separation and bonds. We were being sent to our new homes, and... We ran away because we wanted to stay together. We were scared at the end though. You know... As legend tells, one day a small pup wandered away from its den and wound up lost, far from home. He was rescued by a small boy, and when it was time to return, the pup did not want to go home. He and the boy had formed a true bond, and from that day on, dogs chose to live amongst people to bring the love of animals to human family. And what does this have to do with a wolf? It's funny how it's now they bring up the whole running away thing. Like, they nearly forgot that was a thing, and needed to shoehorn it into this situation. Anyway, Sniffer realizes he does have his ability to smell back, and goes to get Noah and Henry, leading them to our heroes. But first, we have to say goodbye to Michael Duncan. Now it's up to you to rescue them. Why don't you stay with us forever, so you're not all alone? We wolves are needed in the forest as much as you are needed by people. Do you ever get scared? <laughs> Sometimes. But that's why we howl, to let one another know that even though we may feel alone, we never really are. Now if you excuse me, I'm off to start a video game. Oh yeah. The kids take a detour to the farm just to say hi to the dumbass duo before heading to wine country. But uh oh, the parents got out. What do you think that means? Yep, the puppies go in. And because it isn't like this changes Bartleby's mind on having his own air bud, because now he's got five, the father pays Selkirk anyway. I don't know what happened, but I'm 500k richer! Yay! The parents realize their puppies came back for them, and well, this is gonna be quite the finale. Noah and Henry try sneaking their puppies out from Toasted Strudel Kid, but of course, that only goes so far. They run into the cellar and damn it, Butterball! One sip, just one itty bitty sip. Ah! Quick, dudes, he can't doggy paddle. He's too heavy. He's floating. It's a miracle. Come on, Butterball. Come on, Butterball. Come on, Butterball. You can do it. You're almost there. Damn it, Goldie. You didn't learn your freaking lesson! Stop with the farting! I think I broke it. And how have they not been caught yet? The kid and his dad weren't even that far behind! Oh sure, Selkirk starts looking for them in the room. But where did the others go? Oh wait, there's the kid, but where did dad go? I love this bit though. Sniffer comes to stop him and if you look closely, you can see the moment where the kid is just standing motionless. Right about here. Directing at its finest. Ah, there's Dad, about to get barrel rolled. Sorry, I had to. Let's get out of here. Oh, 
No, this isn't good. Well, now it seems Selkirk and his hired men are going to be arrested for kidnapping. And lucky for Bartleby, Butterball learned that even Bratz needs some love and becomes his new pet. And that Tiger is probably going to die of starvation with no one ever looking for it. Anyway, the movie starts wrapping up with all the puppies with their new owners. Also, the kid was playing nothing on his GBA which is ruined by rain, but we see that no matter what, they are all connected through the power of howling. Well, that was Air Buddies, and yeah, it was pretty dumb. Laughably dumb, but yeah, pretty dumb nonetheless. This is the sort of funny dog movie that you see just about all the time, but more so when in this franchise it has to involve puppies that never age. The performances felt lacking on most of the cast, the villain especially, who tries to ham it up, but doesn't quite reach it. And even then, he and his cronies were too dumb to be even the fun kind of bad. The editing feels awkward in some places, and the performances make the production value seem really low in comparison to other films before it. Not that I would know for sure, but oh boy, this is why I'm not ready to take them on yet. There's too much dumbness to be had with these dogs. But, at the very least, this clears out the Patreon board. For now. But we still have one more video in store for this month, and I think you know what's coming. Until then, I'm the Media Hunter. Media's my prey, and reviewing them my way.